I have nothing but endless respect for anyone who has managed to write a coherent thought piece on Riven, the sequel to Myst. This strange game has been constantly sizzling on the back burner of my mind since finishing Myst, the prequel to Riven, about half a decade ago. I jumped into Riven right away, was impressed, got lost, and then dropped it. It was an elusive experience, to say the least. Finishing it always seemed out of reach, but I knew at any moment I could easily click an icon on my desktop and start wandering around a living, breathing world all over again. Myst is such a pain-free game to talk about in comparison. You visit islands all centered around puzzle solving, collect pages, and return to a hub island to watch FMV cutscenes. And even if that doesn't do it justice, I was still able to verbalize that description with ease. Mist just makes sense. And even with all the work put towards making each puzzle feel like a natural part of the world, it still feels video gamey in all the best ways. This year though, I accomplished the impossible. I sat down with a group of friends, restarted Riven, and beat it. I finished the entire game in about two sessions. And I loved it. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had with a puzzle adventure game. It remains an achievement to this day, a monolithic entry that only exists because some guys decided to create their passion project which became the best selling game of all time, up to that point that is, and then turned around and did it again. The budget on display here is unreal. Pre-rendered backgrounds have never and might never again look this good. Riven came out in 1997. I only had one measly year under my belt when it released. It's always bummed me out how I missed the hype boat for Cyan's Mist series by just a smidge. I didn't have cool friends or a dad who played these kind of games growing up. I grew up instead with humongous entertainment games, but for me they were never a collaborative experience. I'd play them quietly on my computer, hold up in my room for hours. I don't think I ever uttered the words Pajama Sam to a friend throughout my entire life. Playing Myst as an adult, then looking further into Cyan's catalog, has made me feel a painful lack of nostalgia that I know so many others had when they landed on Myst Island for the first time. Fans of the series can probably remember exactly where they were in life when that moment hit them. After all, once Mist hooks its claws into you, your life is never truly the same. If you're a fan, I'm sure you remember who you talked to about it, the notes you scribbled, and those special puzzle aha moments. It has aged in such an interesting and charming way thanks to being made during the onset of the 3D revolution. The ages look good, yet charmingly crunchy. It's for that reason, purely aesthetic, that I'll always prefer the original game over its remakes, remasters of remakes, VR remakes, and weird DS ports. Riven, on the other hand, doesn't have any qualifiers for enjoyment. Riven, from its aesthetic to its design, is timeless. And speaking of weird ports, it actually has a surprisingly good Sega Saturn version. I had no idea Riven had a Japanese dub. That is really cool. Each of the five islands has a cohesive, rustic, tropical aesthetic that is so vivid I wouldn't blame you if you thought you were seeing actual photos of a set of uncharted islands. Despite the odd landmasses and interesting creatures, you can walk around Riven and convince yourself that it could actually be a place that exists. It's hard to describe world building this thorough to someone who hasn't experienced it with their own eyes. It's very apparent that years must have gone into just the planning based on how detailed every single screen is. I spent most of my time wandering through these screens, aimlessly lost and trying to figure out where to go. Ask fans to describe what you even do in this game and you will almost certainly be told about the fact that the game only has two real puzzles. Even that in itself is a bit of a spoiler, yet doesn't paint the full picture. You are dropped onto this island with a specific goal to accomplish, a rescue mission. 
and there are only two puzzles in your way to achieving that goal. How you solve them and where to find them is for you to figure out. So you just wander around like I did for years. Your first attempt at Riven will most likely consist of taking in these sights and sounds. Maybe if you're feeling especially bold, pressing some buttons or flipping some switches, perhaps even sitting in a chair. If you manage to complete the game on your first playthrough without impatiently moving on and returning to the well every year for the next five years, congrats. You probably don't have ADHD. Your subsequent playthrough attempts will all have this experimentation to some degree, but the awe of discovery that you'll experience on that first time is truly something else. Every time you find a secret pathway, it will fundamentally change the way you perceive the world. From now on, whenever you play, even if you forget large chunks, something will whisper in your mind to look around in that general area. For better or worse, just like its predecessor, your life before and after Riven will be different. I've never seen a sequel quite live up to its own confidence like Riven does. I loved solving the puzzles here, but that's hardly what makes Riven so special. It's finding those solutions, the way in which the team at Cyan teaches you without lecturing or laying things out plainly that makes Riven stand as tall as it does. If we look at it from the eyes of a self-proclaimed objective critic, Riven exists as a game full of dead ends. It subverts traditional game design, and might actually be one of the earliest perfections of environmental storytelling. As said before, Riven's attention to detail is second to none. In your time with this game, you will learn about its people, their culture, and how they all live with very little actual spoken dialogue. And what is spoken is in a language you cannot understand. But what does any of this mean? How does any of that convey how Riven impacted me? Simple words cannot express just how breathtaking playing this game was. A puzzle can only truly be solved once. While Riven can be seen as a game consisting of two puzzles, I don't look back on it that way. I look at Riven itself as the puzzle. One puzzle that's only solved when you hit the credits. Once every book is read, vista traveled, secret discovered. The story, unlike Myst, gives you satisfying payoffs too. Probably because this is where that game's story is paid off. Riven, in every regard, lives up to the subtitle front and center on its box. The answer to mysteries I'd been curious about for five years are found here, and were worth the wait. The story that exists in the FMV cutscenes is engaging, and I love the lore of the Myst series, but the story told by observing the world and listening to its natural beauty ended up being so much more compelling. And for what the Rand brothers set out to achieve by using the medium of video games, Riven pushes that even further. Maybe too far, though. Riven is a masterpiece, a word I've tried to avoid more and more as I've continued this channel. Finishing this game, though, left me empty in a way that I'd never felt this much before. I truly adored each and every second I put into playing this game. But in retrospect, I think I enjoyed Riven more as a game with secrets that could never be solved. A game of boundless potential, an infinitely unknowable quantity. But that is admittedly on me, and the years of hype that I'd built up in my head. Despite everything, all of my praises, I will always prefer the unsolved mental construct of Riven to the masterpiece I'd played. I prefer instead the masterpiece that is unbeatable. I wish games like this were still being made, but it feels like Riven was the end of an era. Yes, there are more Cyan games, I particularly love what I played of Uru and Abduction, and they have another coming out shortly named Firmament, but Riven is different. Even the remake of Riven that Cyan has recently announced, as good as I'm sure it will be, just won't be the same. I have nothing but praise and respect for the team who conjured up this enigma. Riven goes to show that somehow against all odds, 
you can catch lightning in a bottle twice. This time seeking to improve on the predecessor's design ethos in every single way. For a game to leave me like this, to leave me with an inability to form any meaningful critique, to have me fall back to my pure emotional gut reactions, special is too light of a word. I lived and breathed the dying world of Riven for a few years. That's over now. And like the stranger, I can never go back. Learning every last secret signals the end of the age, and as it crumbles, you're left falling into the void. I will never get to experience my first time with Riven again. How could I? It's impossible to make peace with the dead. If only I had realized how much it meant to me while it was still alive. I'd like to thank Alex Austin, Autumn Jennings, Corvin, Anoravan, Happy Emmons, Hornkerling, I Frozen Ace, Jeremy DeForest, Looping Pyre, Moonwatcher, Renteca Bond, Sniggs, Wayne is Boss, Your Friends Chuck, and all of the other patrons who support my channel monthly. Thanks for watching.